Hello everyone, my name is Rodrigo, and I'll show you how to reduce code size using a DNA spy technique from bioinformatics. So let's start asking this question. Does size matter? Well, yes it does, and especially in embedded systems where having tiny devices is something crucial. We want to do more with less. If, if your program does not fit in a, a small, low-cost chip, it means that you have to buy the bigger, more expensive one. In large scale, this is very significant. Another upside of reducing code size is that we free extra space for new features and more user data. So if we, if, if we can have smaller programs, it means that we can have small, uh, smaller memories, reducing costs. And many companies are looking for this. So how can we do that? Well, compilers can optimize for size, and the key a key optimization for that is to merge similar functions. Uh, for example, if we have two identical functions in our, in our program, it's obvious that we don't need both of them. They're identical anyway. So we don't need to have redundant code in our programs. But we can go beyond just merging identical functions and really squeeze our programs. So let's see an example of how we can merge similar functions. So if we look at these two functions, uh, we can see that all this green code here is identical. So what we, we want to, to, to get here is to have a new function that can replace both of them while maintaining the program semantics. So our new function could just have one copy of this code, and this will be the starting point for, for, for our optimization. But if we, if we look at, the, at this addition, they have two different operands uh, in the original functions. So at this point, we need a way to select which value to use, depending on depending whether we're executing function one or function two. So for that, we'll create a new parameter, which identifies which function we are actually executing. And then we'll use this parameter to select if we want to use the operand from function one or function two. And now that we have this value selected, we can use it as the operand for our addition. Uh, looking at function two now, uh, we can see that we have this, uh, this branch, which creates a difference in the control flow fr from function two compared to function one. So we can do similar to what we did before here and just copy this code. But before executing this, uh, this part of the control flow, we need to, to check which function we, we are executing, and only execute this part of the code if we are in function two. If we look at this return statement, uh, which is unique to, to function one, we need a way to, to handle that as well. But before looking to this return statement, we look into the return, value, return types. Function one returns an integer, while function two uh, returns void. So in this case, we can always return an integer and just ignore the return value if we're executing function two. So we put int, int as the return type of, this, uh, of the new function. And because of that, we can always uh, return with no special check, and which means that this return statement will be executed for both uh, functions. And because we can, comp we can delete the, both original functions, this reduces code size which is great, but the problem is that uh, none of the existing techniques were able to do that, even for this uh, very simple example. Because what we have at the moment is production compilers, they, they're only able to merge identical functions, which is uh, very limited. And the state of the art, although they are able to improve a lot over this uh, simplistic uh, t technique, they still, it's still not enough. For example, they have many, many restrictions, such as they can only handle identical CFGs, identical return types, uh, identical list of parameters, and also the number of instructions per basic block. So in summary, they can only handle differences in corresponding instructions uh, in an otherwise identical CFG. But what we want to, to have is we want to be able to merge any two functions and be able to choose to do so only when it's profitable. And the, the great news is that we, we were able to achieve exactly that. So let's see how we do it. 
using the same example, uh, but now looking at the IR, IR form. We don't need all the information at the moment, so we'll just have use this simplified uh, version of the of our CFGs. So what we want to do here is to do exactly the same transformation as we did manually, but do that automatically. And to, to do that, with our first step is to linearize these CFGs uh, to have a a representation similar to how we humans look at the source code in a textual format. So the first function is, is trivial to linearize. We just take the instructions as they are, appear in the, in the basic block. Function two has a slightly more complex CFG. So we first need to, to, to decide on, a, on an ordering for, the, for these basic blocks. And for, for example, we use the uh, rever reverse post order for that. And then we can just take the instructions as they appear uh, in this order. First, breaking down uh, basic block one, and so on. Now that we have both functions in a linear form, we need a way to select uh, what we can merge and what we cannot merge between uh, these two functions. So here I'll illustrate uh, just the the concept of what we want to achieve this is not exactly how we implement it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the actual implementation uh, later. So starting from the top, we have two labels. Labels we consider that we can always, it's always a match. So, okay, this is a match. M moving on, we have two multiplications. And because the opcodes are identical, we're only interested at the opcodes at this point. Because they are the same opcode, this is also a match. Uh, the operands are identical as well, but we're not considering them at this point. Next, we have two additions, and because, again, the upcode is the same, this is also a match. And notice that the operands are, are, are different uh, for this instruction, but we'll deal with these, these operands later on. Then we have function calls. In, in function calls, we always consider the, which function we are calling, and because they are the same, this is also a match. And we, we continue doing the same thing until this point, where a, we have two different uh, instructions. One is a return, the other one is a comparison. And because the same is match, we insert a gap in function one and continue doing that, uh, re repeating this, this test for the other functions, other instructions in function two. So this is also a mismatch. We keep inserting gaps and we keep doing that. And so this point where we have to uh, return instructions. So yeah, this is also a match. And okay, and this is, and here we can, we, ha we know what we can merge between these two functions. But the, the exciting thing is that this is a solved pro basically solved problem in bioinformatics. They, this problem also appears, for example, when they are trying to compare two different DNAs or when they, they want to find uh, sequences of amino acids in, in proteins, and many other examples. So we can use already existing and efficient algorithms that they use in bioinformatics to solve our alignment problem. And I'll show you briefly how we implement that using one of, the, one of uh, these techniques. And the implementation uses a dynamic programming solution. And so, We'll start here with this table and this penalty system. And the first step is to fill in the first row and the first column by repeatedly applying the, the gap penalty. And then to compute to this first cell here, we'll first consider that we are inserting a gap in function one, which means that we are coming from the left. And because it's a gap, we add the penalty gap. We do the same if we are coming from the top, which, is, which means that we're inserting a gap in function two. And we also consider the diagonal, and the diagonal means that we either have a match or a mismatch. In this case, we have two labels, so it's a match, so we're adding the, the plus two here. And then the actual value for this cell will be the, the maximum value among them. So this is a two. And we do the same for, for example, this other cell here. But in this case, the diagonal has a mismatch because in one function we have a label, the other one we have a multiplication. So we have the, the mismatch penalty. 
and the maximum value here is coming from the left, so it's one. And we repeat this process for the whole table, and then the solution we computed coming from the last cell, and then maximizing the path towards the, the first cell. And this is exactly our optimized uh, sequence alignment that we had before. And now that we have this, uh, this aligned sequence, we can actually perform the code generation to, uh, to compute the, the merge function. So starting from the top again, labels will always generate a new basic block. So this is a, our, new, uh, our new basic block. We also compute this uh, renaming table, and we need to keep track uh, of that to, 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 to compute the operands. Uh, I'll show an example later on. So uh, these two multiplications will create a new instruction in the, this basic block, and the operands are identical, so we can just copy them. The same thing for the addition, we create this new addition in the basic block. Uh, here we have two, uh, operands are zero and x zero, both of them map to m zero. Uh, we can look at that in the renaming table, so we can just add m zero as the operand. Now that we have two different uh, operands, as we saw in the previous example, we need to create a select for between these two values. So we add a select instruction, uh, which uses the function identifier as the condition, and then selects the correct value depending on which function you are executing. And then we use the selected value as the actual operand of the, the new instruction. And we keep doing the same thing here. Again, the operands map to the same name, and we keep doing that. Now that we have a diverging point, we create a branch, again, using the function identifier. And then we have a, a branch that corresponds to function one and another branch that corresponds to function two. So all this non-mergeable code uh, from function two will go into, the, the, into its own basic block, B3. So we're starting with this comparison here. Again, we remap the operand to use the correct, uh, correct value. So we keep doing the same here. Again, we have a label, so we create a new basic block for this label. And then we, can, we create the edges based on the, the, the labels. And we keep doing the same, again, another label, a new basic block, and then we connect the edges, we create the edges. And now we have a converging point. So here we use the, the last basic block from the, that we had in the CFG to create a new merging point. And then we continue uh, inserting the instructions uh, yeah, as, as we, we, we need. So here the return instruction and so on. So this is our merge function. Now, the only thing that we need to do now is to, to handle the list of parameters. So let's say our two functions has this, this two list of parameters. Here we're show, only showing the parameter types. So the first three steps are very simple. First, we create the function identifier. Uh, in this case, we use just a Boolean to, to use it directly as the conditional. And then we copy all the, the parameters from function one. Uh, for the parameters of function two, we add it here if we don't have a corresponding parameter. But we have a, a parameter of the same type from the other function. We can reuse it to reduce the number of parameters that we have in our merged function. But we can only reuse the parameters once. So now we have another float, so we create a new one. Uh, the same thing goes for this integer where we can reuse, and again, for this point as well. So let's just see a summary of how we compare to the other techniques. Uh, yes, we can handle return types. If we have two different return types, let's say an integer and a double, we can use a union-like uh, uh, approach. And yeah, so, and I showed you like integer with voids as well. So list of parameters we can handle, uh, CFGs, instructions, operands, and so on. So now that we have seen the merge operation, we need to decide when to merge, because now that we have a, this very general technique, it may not always be profitable in terms of reducing code. So one approach would be to test all possible pairs of functions, but this would clearly be infeasible, especially because the merge operation can be quite expensive. Uh, 
So we came up with this clever way for, for selecting which pairs of functions to use. So we first create a, we first perform a very lightweight pass over this, uh, of, of, of the functions create pre-computing these fingerprints. And these fingerprints are like, the, are something like this summary here. For example, we have five additions, 10 branches, and so on. And based on this fingerprint, whenever, for each function, we rank all other functions and then select the, the, the top candidate. And this rank is based on estimate of the upper bound of how many instructions you can merge. And then when we have this rank, we select the top candidate and form the merge operation only with that candidate. And this oper operation of ranking the candidates uh, is very lightweight because we only take the fingerprint and the number of opcodes is, is constant. So after we merge, because we know the, the final function statically, it's very useful for us if, to check if we have actually reduced code size, and we do that to decide whether we throw away the merge function or, or we keep it. And, and we do the same for the other functions as well. So a quick evaluation here, we, we use OS in a LTO fashion, and we compare to the LLVM's identical function merging and the state of the art, and we use these two benchmark suites. This is our average reduction on, on spec 2006. Uh, we can see that the state of the art improves uh, uh, quite well compared to LLVM's identical only, but we were able to, to improve uh, a lot more from, compared to the state of the art. Uh, in the mid-bench, it's interesting because none of the previous techniques were able to, to achieve any meaningful result. And th the main reason here is because most of these benchmarks, they are quite small. So we don't have like very trivially similar functions. And another reason is most of this, uh, all, all, all of the programs that is in this mid bench, they are C programs. And if you look at our spec benchmarks in, from this slide, we'll see that in the C pro programs in the spec bench, uh, the previous techniques did quite poorly as well. And m most of the benefit for merging uh, tri trivially similar functions uh, from the other techniques came from templates, for example. But we also did quite well in these C programs, so that's why we're able to, to achieve uh, th this kind of results. Uh, looking at runtime, we have a, sli a slight overhead. Uh, for example, we can achieve, uh, introduce overheads inside hot, hot blocks. But we did some case studies using profiling, and we can basically bring this overhead to zero if you don't, just don't merge the hot functions or the hot basic blocks and still get uh, some meaningful code size reduction. Compilation time overhead, we, we had a small uh, overhead, 15%, uh, but we, we are still looking into ways of reducing this overhead uh, even further, and we have some ideas of how to do that, and we, we are investigating. So to conclude, uh, yeah, we, we introduced this novel and, and more powerful technique to merge any, any pair of functions and, and also this efficient uh, exploration mechanism. Just some uh, useful links here. We have a link to our paper in CGO. I have a, the source code for my prototype available in this link and uh, some points of connection with the LLVM community as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Questions for Rodrigo? Hi. Uh, hi, over here. Uh, so if you're merging two functions that came from two different source uh, points in the source code, do you preserve the debug information somehow? Uh, sorry? Do you preserve the debug information somehow if you're merging two different functions on different points of the source code? Uh, short answer is no. I'm, I, I haven't looked into the debug information at the moment. But we will have similar problems uh, regarding debug information, for example, similar problems that the outliner has, and uh, perhaps uh, some similar to the inline as well. But we plan to look into that, yeah, I think. Yeah, have you looked at any uh, you know, deep learning techniques like representing your LLVM IR as a sequence and doing some kind of LSTM on that? Uh, no, I have looked into that. Uh, I've been considering using, using some, of, some of the machine learning techniques in the ranking to, this, to decide on the ranking, but I haven't considered for the actual sequence. 
Thank you. So you mentioned state of the art. What is this exactly? Uh, it's a paper from from uh, 2014, and they're able to handle fu functions like this one. This is an example from the state of the art paper, and they they basically like in summary they only they're able to merge basic blocks that, uh, functions that have identical uh, CFGs and only corresponding instructions inside particular basic blocks they are different. For example, in in one otherwise identical function, inside the loop you have a different function call, for example. But from University of Edinburgh, right? Uh, yes, Tobias oh. von Kolb, yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, performance uh, data? For, uh, because we want to balance the performance and the code size, and we need some information for the performance inference. So th this is my, my case study where I use profiling. So the first bar, like the first pink bar, is the is, is the function module without any profile information, and the corresponding runtime overhead. So if we we cap some of the hot functions, we can reduce the the performance overhead quite a lot in the second uh, brown bar, and we still have some reduction, and we can basically bring the performance overhead to zero, like the last bar. If we just merge, for example, the, the code functions. So, yeah, this is some preliminary results uh, in, in that regard. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank okay. you. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.